EVs are about to become a thing of the past, courtesy of Toyota's all-new engine type, which is completely unheard of. This new engine that Toyota has been working on is said to be the most eco-friendly engine in existence. So buckle up and get ready for a complete turnaround in the world of cars as we explore Toyota's new engine that will destroy the entire EV industry. The engine that Toyota is working on is, believe it or not, a water-powered engine which is relatively similar to their FCEVS, such as the Toyota Mirai and hydrogen-powered internal combustion engines, like the 1.6 hydrogen three-cylinder they recently developed. Historically, water engines have been one of the greatest aspirations of the entire car industry, as they promise huge benefits over regular engines and EVs. There have been countless attempts at making water-powered engines viable and reliable for day-to-day -day usage, but to no avail. That's where Toyota is about to jump in with their all-new water engine. Unlike most previous attempts, which were literally made in sheds with limited budgets, Toyota has proper funding and can actually test out the engine in all possible conditions. How does the water engine actually function? The engine itself is, for all intents and purposes, similar to the HHO generator, with only a few minor differences that make it better suited for daily usage in vehicles. The engine is very similar to the hydrogen combustion engine found in the Toyota Yaris GRH2, except that instead of using already processed hydrogen, the engine processes it and separates hydrogen from oxygen by creating a chemical reaction. In essence, the engine uses the process of electrolysis to separate the H2O molecules. Hydrogen and oxygen get separated once the electrodes, which are located in the tank containing the water, start emitting high voltages. Since the hydrogen itself is contained within the water when it's stored in the tank, there's no need for heavily armored and extremely heavy tanks, as is the case with FCEVS and hydrogen combustion engines, where hydrogen is difficult to contain. The process of powering the vehicle is where the similarities between hydrogen combustion engines and water engines start. After it is separated from oxygen, hydrogen is sent to the engine, where it combusts similarly to compressed natural gas. The overall way the engine functions is similar to CNG-powered ones. The fuel injectors need to be adapted for compressed gas, and the cylinder heads, pistons and valves need to be armored, as hydrogen is highly combustible, requiring stronger components for detonation. What are the long-term benefits to the environment? First of all, it's almost completely zero emissions compared to regular internal combustion engines, similar to EVs, while also being far more convenient than EVs. Actually, scrap that. It's more convenient than any other engine type out there. As long as you have access to diluted water, you'll be able to refuel it, and it'll cost you next to nothing. Additionally, there will be much less need for extracting oil. If the engine goes mainstream, the only real branch of the entire industry where fossil fuels might be used is in heavy machinery or large power production units. Furthermore, there will be no need for extracting rare metals from the earth, which is one of the dirtiest processes in the entire car industry at the moment, as it directly pollutes both the water sources and the soil surrounding the mine, making the area completely uninhabitable. Also, if we were to compare water engines to hydrogen combustion engines and FCEVS, which are also marketed as zero emissions, we would see that they are far superior. Storing water requires little to no effort, whereas storing hydrogen alone requires much more thought, specific conditions, and above all, much more money, while also being significantly more harmful to the environment. Hydrogen in its pure form is a gas that is extremely hard to contain and can easily escape from the tank of a vehicle if there is any irregularity. This means the tanks need to be armored, constantly monitored, and regularly maintained, whereas the fuel tank for water-powered vehicles can hypothetically be any plastic container. Furthermore, storing hydrogen outside of the car is a hassle, as it requires ideal temperature conditions and must be kept completely static and indestructible. Distilled water can be purchased at any well-stocked supermarket, or if you have basic chemistry knowledge, it can be produced at home. Acquiring hydrogen in its pure form is an expensive process, and combined with the numerous problems associated with storing the gas, it's clear why hydrogen hasn't become widespread and probably never will. The costs of producing and storing hydrogen are high, which in turn increases the price for consumers, leading to the question, why would anyone buy hydrogen cars if they are more expensive to buy and operate compared to electric vehicles, EVs, and fossil-fueled cars? While hydrogen cars are green and theoretically simple to use, the main question is whether water engines are practical for daily use. Surprisingly, they are. 
contrary to belief, water-powered engines are not gutless. In fact, they are comparable to most gasoline engines and can potentially be more powerful, as they are capable of generating up to three times more energy than gasoline engines. Additionally, they are safer because they do not store highly combustible fuels, eliminating concerns of explosions. These engines are also relatively easy to produce, with mechanical designs only slightly more complicated than gasoline engines, and they are cheaper and simpler to produce than both EVs and fuel cell electric vehicles FCEVs. This makes them a viable option for countries that are not rich in oil resources. For example, an Iranian scientist named Aladin Qasemi converted his Peugeot 405 to run on water, demonstrating the potential of water-powered vehicles. Kasemi's conversion resulted in a car that averaged between 30 to 40 miles per gallon of water, which is significantly better than the petrol engine that the car originally had. This suggests that water-powered engines could achieve over 80 miles per gallon, making them extremely economical to run. However, since there are no mainstream water engines and no major car manufacturers actively working on this technology, we must ask ourselves if water engines are the future. Hypothetically, yes, but the answer is not simple. Water engines face several challenges, including logistical issues. Although the infrastructure for water engines would require minimal adjustments, the technology remains experimental, and many prototypes have been unreliable. The daily usability of water engines is mediocre and there are safety concerns. Splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen creates risks as hydrogen is difficult to contain and even a small leak could be dangerous or fatal. Even if a company like Toyota were to create a reliable water-powered car, there is a possibility that powerful industries such as lithium mining, battery production, and oil companies could suppress the development of such engines. Using water as fuel would reduce the need for fossil fuels and rare elements like cobalt and lithium, potentially disrupting major industries. There are even rumors that 25 years ago, the inventor of the first water-powered car, Stanley Allen Meyer, was threatened by oil company representatives. He claimed to have been offered millions to destroy his invention, but he refused. Meyer died under suspicious circumstances, and after his death, his car and engine plans were stolen. This raises questions about whether companies are secretly working on water-powered engines, and if they are, they are likely doing so in absolute secrecy, as there are no official confirmations of such projects. 